Well, hey everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dancefish.com, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of Mike Mangi's fish room. Mike is an amazing dude. He's the only guy I know of who's dedicated to barbs. That's what he specializes in. He has all kinds of amazing barbs, some neat sight printed, some other stuff that's really cool. I saw stuff in his fish room that I've never even heard about before, and other stuff that I'd only read the name of and never seen in person before. It was a great time. So Mike, thanks so much for having me. Um, Mike has a store at getgills.com. It's called Extreme Aquatics. So if you're interested in supporting Mike and his quest to uh, to specialize in barbs and other saprinids, then uh, check out his store at getgills.com. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at Mike Manji's fish room. Here we go. These are male cherries. Mm -hmm. There's a couple females in I've here. I always like cherries. I just think they're gorgeous. I breed cherries by the hundreds. I mean, I, I move cherries. I only sell there's, there's one store in town that buys almost all of my cherries and I don't really sell them to the public and I don't sell them to another store because a, it's not fair. Can you can you tell us what your breeding strategy is, your process? Right there. All right, we're going to go look at that. Show us this. Right is that 10 gallon tank. Okay, cool. So here we are. These are long fin cherries. Oh, this one. Gotcha. Fatten them up. Okay, wait, so we've got, we've so got a divided tank here. We've got a divided here. tank. we yeah. got a grade on the bottom. Uh -huh. My buddy, um, Roger Miller, he passed away a couple years ago. He was our treasurer for years. Uh -huh. And when I was president, he built these tanks. So it's so, like a... So what it does is it pulls the water down, up, and then this is like almost like a matten style filter. Mm -hmm. And so there's always a current. So, so the they spawn the eggs get... throughout, and the fry come up over in here. Oh, cool. And you can, and just... you can siphon them out. So the fry just appear? And they you just appear, and you siphon them out. You, so you leave the females in here. Uh -huh. I'll fatten them up. I'll drop a male in at night. And then I'll leave them in there for a couple days, and then I can either pull them and refatten the females, and then I'll just siphon fry as they appear. Well, that's really cool. And then I refatten the females up. Like I said, I spawn these things like crazy. I have never seen this exact setup like this. No, hey, nobody let has. Let me get a. So, okay, breeders here, great. Yep. Because of this filter here, it yep. goes so over. There's a, a slight right here. Su current goes yep. this way. Yep. So it goes down. Yeah. Over through the mountain and back. Yep. And actually, when he built them, he put a couple of drops of methylene blue to check. The and you crest. can see it. Yeah. So, so the eggs are going to go here and hang out down here. And when yep, they hatch, hatch, the current's going to bring them this way. They can't go through the filter, so they right. end up in here. And you can just get them out. Right. And if I have to, this see how I got that zip tie on there. I can yeah, pull that can whole pull bottom out. out. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. What? What is that material? It's like a. It's a plastic that he just he drilled holes through and huh. he put a counter sink on it so it's tapered going down. Yeah. He drilled them all on a drill press. He made it. Wow. He made that map. That's dedication. Um and is there at this point are there any no, fry there to look at? Be any frying in oh, there okay. because I haven't dropped a male in yet. Oh okay. Yeah. I moved the females in there about two days ago. That is a necessary part. Well yeah. Lucky and, for and us. Netting fish is a little bit of a challenge to me right now. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. All right. Well, that's that's new. That's cool, Mike. Thanks for showing me that. I have never seen anything quite like this. The, the so closest a, I've seen is that's a perpetual spawning. Right? Yeah, that's awesome. The closest I've seen is like a tank that's divided here with something very dark. It has little holes drilled at the top. This is dark on this side and light. No, I'm sorry. This is light on this side, and this is fairly dark here. And when the fry hatch, they're phototrophic, so they go, so they to, go to the light, light. Right. or photophilic, I guess. I, I'm trying to be fancy, and that's like a $50 word for a five-cent guy. But um, yeah, they swim up through that right. and, and collect here. The work. But this one is better because the problem with that one is you don't get good flow here, right. so this can stagnate. Wow, right. this doesn't. This doesn't. This whole thing is is all flow. Is and all then, flow through. I usually let some algae grow, and I throw some java moss on this side. This is freaking fry, brilliant for the fry. And then, like I say, I'll I just cleaned it all out um, uh -huh. of fry like three weeks ago. So I dropped the female. These are longfin cherry barbs. I dropped yeah. the females in there. I'm fattening them up, and I'll drop a male longfin cherry. All right, there. everyone, get a good look at this. This is the only time I've ever seen this, and I can't think of a better way to do this without 
working your butt off. Like you don't have to collect eggs in here or anything like that. That's awesome. What a uh, what, what do you find the best starting food, and how do you how do you get the fry raised up? I use my pallet food for my corals. Oh, okay. So tiny little coral I, food. I use my coral food. I uh -huh. ran across it because I ran out of my all my fry food, and I uh -huh. thought, well, I've got pallet food for all of my zoas and everything yeah, else. Yeah, so, so, so you got all these corals going. So it's, I just took my pallet food from my corals and put a little bit of water in there, and it, it is absolutely fantastic for a fry food for barbs and rainbows and. Huh. You can that, get it from Pollock Labs, and it's cheaper than any fry food you can buy, actually. That makes sense, because it's, it's, it's a really fine, really tiny right. little powder, right? Right, and it's loaded with nutrients. And do you just sprinkle it on the top, and yeah. good to go? Oh, I put a little bit in a squirt bottle, oh, or okay. a syringe, okay. or I'll sprinkle it on the top. Mm -hmm. And the other thing i found with a really small... See, these fry aren't nearly as small as like right, white cloud right. fry. Yeah, cherry cherry eggs are actually pretty big. You no, can even like take them some out of the of white cloud fry, they're really small. So here's some white clouds going. Yeah. No, those aren't really white clouds though. Oh okay. Alright. Those, those are the Vietnamese? No, the Vietnamese are in the 75 down below you. Those are the um yellow. Oh okay. The they've got a they're they're truly a wild species. I, I gotta look it up. I don't remember the Latin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's the normal white cloud we have in the trade, there's the Vietnamese, and then there's the yellow that you're talking about. Those right. are the three that and the I yellow it has a scientific name now. Um, let's see if I can find it. This actually seems like an awesome breeding setup because you it have is, all this plants they, and algae and, they won't and eat, the babies they won't will eat just the go in there and have plenty to eat on, lots of infusoria, lots of critters. Right, and they pretty much leave the eggs and babies alone. Yeah. And if I tear it all apart, there's fry in there. Oh, I know. They'll be back in there. We, we won't see them on there, camera, probably. Yeah, there's fry in there. I'm hoping to get lucky, but most of them are probably in that mess of algae, which is awesome for them. Uh, I moved the pond zones from outside, some of them, because I had such good luck with my ponds last mm -hmm. year. So I grabbed some of the pond stone out because the eggs fall down in there and the oh, parents yeah, can't yeah. get to them. Yep. Yep. So, all these big rocks here. Yep. So I moved some of them out because they were all preloaded with. Um, yeah, they're covered in goodness. Right. <laughs> and that has been absolutely fantastic. So these are. I'm seeing some of those barbs you had upstairs, right? Yeah, there's a breeding pair of the Cavalli barbs in there. Oh, these are fantastic. I've never seen this fish before in person. Cavalli or Cavalli? K A V. Volley, like Victor V. Yeah, I'll look up the scientific name in a minute. Victor, I'm a blank Victoria. on it right now. Victoria. I don't know what, what the proper. Um, Man, look at that. Look at those pelvic fins. Those things are awesome. Yeah, I've never seen this fish before. This is exciting for me. You guys seen this? This Cavalli barb? Check this guy out. That back, the back is, is the back. Oh, for the white the cloud. Mm -hmm. Is the yellow white cloud. These were wild cloud. So these are the the Bechnesis. And then these swords, are these a wild type those, sword? Those or are these Kal Kalmani. Uh, Kalmani. Kalmani? Oh, okay, yeah, There's yeah, yeah. There's a trio yeah. in there. Yep, yep. You can take them back with you if you want them. would say yes, but I'm going on an airplane. I know. <laughs> these I'll, days, I'll ship them to it you. used to be. If you, if you, I'm serious. I, I, I've had that fish for four years. I got those from... Um, uh, got him right out of his fish room too. Busty Wessel. Oh yeah. He collected. He them. collected them. I got him right out of his fish room. So they're location specific. Yeah, I have I have all the location data and everything on mm -hmm. them. But I've had them for so long and I've given them away and traded them mm -hmm. and sold them and there's. That's a that is a handsome sword tail. I like the black border. Yeah, beautiful. Isn't yeah, it? the black that borders the yellow on his caudal really sets it off. It, it and you'll notice that they're in there with barbs. Oh yeah. And you see any problem with fins? No. Nipping? No. Plants? No. Look good. Exactly. Really? Barbs are the is, most misunderstood fish in our hobby. Is that a capella? This is this like this is this a tetra? Oh, the one lone fish in there? Yeah. That is actually a clown rasbora. Oh, that is? To me, it looked like one of those... It's a clown rasbora. Right. I think there's one or two in there that are left from... Uh, yeah, it's got the spot on the side. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen I, that I one in person them. either. 
to try to learn about spawning some of the blackwater species mm -hmm. of barbs and daniels, but they proved to be more of a challenge than. So what we learned is they're a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Now I see tons of like babies and stuff Those in are here. All are endlers from oh. the, um, Kapona location. Man, look at. They, they're documented Kapona location. So they're a true wild type endler. Yes, they're a true oh, wild nice. type endler. Look at all these plants, man. This is perfect for endlers. Let's see if I can get some footage from the side. So this is a true endler that exists in the wild. Yeah, that's. Uh, Good. So that's from under a bridge in Kampona Village. Uh huh. As as they are. That's what the collection location pull off, was. Pull off the side of the road. There's a, there's some water under the bridge. Let's go collect. Yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> well, that's cool. And then down here, this is the 75. Yeah, that's full of um. There's blue tiger shrimp in there, and then there's the true um. Vietnamese. See the school of Vietnamese. Oh like, yeah, yeah, there. cool. Yeah, I put six in there. How big's the school now? Yeah, a lot bigger than six. <laughs> 18 at least? Yeah, I put six in there. Yeah, cool. And I didn't do anything. I yeah. just left them alone. That's the beauty of white clouds. Now this is another Puntigra species. Oh, it's That's a... Anchiosporus. Yeah. That's from Borneo. So what's their temperament like? Um, Peaceful. It's a lovely fish. Yeah. Beautiful. It's more of a blackwater species than most of the Puntigris. Man, I wish when I looked at the lists, I could be confident what I was getting. Because there's the, the tiger barbs are listed all over. But then they have all these other ones they list as this tiger barb and that tiger barb. And I can never tell what I'm getting, though. So I kind of avoid them because I don't know what I'm getting. Right. It's hard. For, and I can't identify them by looking at them. Um, I need an expert. But it's another tiger barb style species. But the Puntigris is more blackwater. Mm-hmm. Or the Anchiosporus. Mm -hmm. uh, that's from Borneo. This this one is endemic to Borneo only. So this is going to be a little more of a challenge to, to breed because right. they're soft water, black water type species. Right. Probably a little cooler temperature as well, maybe. I, don't I know. spawned them once, but I didn't get any viable eggs. So I think um, I got to just. I think I got to do it with rainwater or RO. What is your water like naturally here? Well, I, I get about tap. seven, eight out of the tap. And how hard is it? Do you know? um, hardness, I don't remember. Okay, but if it's 7-8, it's, it's pretty hard. hard. Yeah. It's like Michigan water, so it's hard. That's a breeding group of super red Yeah, I see some there. It's a good looking one there. There's a breeding group of super reds there. There's a bunch of super reds growing out there. They're about two and a half. There's probably oh, wait. a dozen of them Did I miss there. some? Oh yeah, there. check this out. About there's there's one there. there. Yeah. yeah. Those are just grow-ups for sale. You have some of these on get gills, don't you? You did? Or? I did. I when I had my eye catastrophe, I pulled all my livestock off from get gills. I'm just getting comfortable enough. Yeah, to get back. back to life. And your your store on get gills is extreme aquatics. Is yep. that right? Extreme yeah, aquatics. Cool. So that's awesome. There's you've got a lot of fish that most people don't have. So I'm excited to have you on there. All right. And then here's another untiger species. Oh wait, you got Achilles. Oh yeah. Hang on. Killies, Only one species, alert. you know what they are, right? I'm guessing that that's Normani. Yeah, very good. And those are the only three I couldn't catch out of this tank. One of the one of the lamp eyes you can sometimes find around, and we've got there's, three males? Yeah, there's three males in there. i got to get them out. I, I have all the other fish, are, and we'll go over there. It's, I have a species only 15-gallon for them. Cool. Well, I, I like them. I like their bright blue eye. And, you know, as they get older, they they get some orange and the dorsal extends. And the I got them a month ago because I wanted to grow them out. I'm going to throw them all in the pond. Well, they've got... That's good size for not having them too long. Yeah. That's about as big as they get. I know. I think. So, cool. I feed and water change pretty good. Well, I'm getting them ready. So I, Labor Day week or Memorial Day weekend, I'll, I'll put them all in a pond. Uh-huh. All my Norman eyes. Wow, what's going... That's another... Wow, this tank is awesome. <laughs> One of your... Oh, this tank doesn't have the tiger barbs in it, but this tank. I has. love the shape of it, though. This is this is another thirty-three long, or is yep, that something else? A thirty-three okay. long. That's a thirty-three long. That's a thirty-three okay. long. With the gravel, it looked. It's narrower because yeah. I keep layering the gravel up. So, what is your maintenance routine? What do you find works best? You're I do water about... changes on Sundays. Okay, once a week, and yep. is it fifty percent, twenty-five? Nah, it depends, on, depends the on the tank. Like this tank here will be fifty percent because this tank here is loaded with uh -huh. barbs. I got red glass barbs in here. And barbsy. I and mean, barbs eat and barbs eat a are messy. lot of food. Yeah. And here again, I put, I put these hyphen platies in here mm -hmm. just to prove. 
Yep, that they can get along with them. That they can get along and they're not fin shredders. So I I sold a lady um, a group of clown barbs. I sold her six, so I sent her seven. And um, she got back to me like a week later and was like, these guys are tearing each other apart. And I was confused because I've never had that problem. And so she had heard from someone that a larger group would do better. So she ordered, I think, six or nine more from me, put those in, then no problems. Is that something you should you've always ever keep barbs in a large group? Uh huh. Because they're not a schooling fish, they're a shoaling fish. And right. being a shoaling fish, they need to develop a pecking order. Just like cichlids. Right. They need to develop that pecking order. And if you only have six, some get. And you always want to go with an odd number. Uh huh. Because if you go with an even number, that you have a chance of getting the even number of males and females. Uh, but if you go with an odd number, you, the school, the shoal is always offset one way or the other, male or female heavy. Uh huh. So being offset one way or the other makes the shoal easier to develop a pecking order. Oh, uh, I gotcha. gotcha. Now these gotcha. set knives, you won't hardly see these set knives in, in the States at all. They're cool. But I, I like, so I when I like those the, came the lemon the list, yellow owned, kind of orange yeah, on them. I, yeah. Well, the, the red glasses are the clear ones. These striped ones are set knife barbs. Well, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And they got a little bit of coloration in the mm -hmm. dorsals. Yeah. And then Roger yeah, Miller, yeah. Roger out. Miller for a lot of years bred these panda barbs. Right. So mm -hmm. I have a group of these panda barbs in here that were from his collection. Do they, they turn spawn red easily. on them or when they're My male. Here's my male. Oh yeah, they do. There he is. There's my male. He's all kind of got he's the reddish, orangish color on him. He's yeah. colored up. He's trying to see this female. She's about half as fat as she was this morning when the lights oh, came okay. on. Yeah, so somewhere so. in there, <laughs> somewhere in there, she spawned. Yeah, I took that beauty out. I see pictures and I can, I never know. I'm like, how much has this been touched up and all that. So it's really nice to see them in person. You're like, that's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> but this is my favorite. This set nice. These are my favorite the, of my new barbs that I'm starting to work with. I got to grow them out a little bit more. So that's what four or five bars on them, depending yeah. on if you count the eye and the tail. Bar that's line. really hard barb to find in the states. It's very common in Europe. Now, how big do they get? Um, there's one in there that's about as big as they get. Okay, so see, they're see nice. A couple of them yeah, are, yeah. They're really inch close. seventy-five ish. Yeah. maybe two inches, two inches full grown. Two inches. Tops. So that's that's great. I like I like nice small fish. Yep. Well, I hope you breed them. Um, you know, one barb I've never had aggression with is drape fin barbs. Those guys are mellow. Yeah, they're mellow. I this was my drape fin barb tank. I moved them all out of here because mm -hmm. I spawned them and I observed them. And they're fun when they I made spawn. all my I made all my notes. Yeah, I got some great videos of them spawning where they, they invert on the leaf. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and I've got some great videos of that in my talk. When that male flares that dorsal fin. Yep. It's a beautiful fish. But <laughs> oh, I love them. I moved them out because you can only do just so much, and I really want to work with a lot of different species yeah, of barbs. And, 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 and the drape fins are not something that is hard to find at this point. They're fairly well. They're not. And they're, they're fairly common, easy but to spawn, fairly but they're hard to get a good yield out of. Yeah, they're more continuous spawner, like a killifish right. or a rainbow. Instead, right. I of call a them a group. trickle spawner. Trickle spawner. <laughs> yeah, they spawn a little bit every day. <laughs> trickle spawner. And they I always spawn at five o'clock at night, so it was wonderful. I got home from work, I feed them, and I watch them spawn. Yeah. it was beautiful. Yeah, but I really want their man of my red fins because I'm told the behaviors are the same. And it, it's a different drape fin, and it's got, uh, to me, it's a prettier fish. How do you source your stuff? I mean, you got stuff that's hard to find. Is it just occasionally something will come in a pet store, and you're like, oh. I or? work with Ben at um, Watercolors, oh, right. and he monitors the list for me. I did a tour yep. earlier today. That's an amazing store. And like, he, Ben works with a list for me, and I sell him a lot of, like, all my cherry barbs right. and my super reds and so stuff he, like that so he knows you're looking and he'll so he knows what out. i'm looking for mm -hmm. and he'll send me you know hey are you looking for this or hey i was real surprised i've never seen a retail store that has so much stuff that hobbyists would be into right you he know? kind of caters that way yeah all right next one down black moscow another awesome 33 long got black some tin winnies some black moscows platy call them pond fish <laughs> Um, that one has the genetics for the spike tail. The the Moscow does. No, the platy. Oh, okay. The platy's the spike gotcha, tail. Gotcha, gotcha. So you can see the spike on her. Oh, I got she's it. She's pregnant, so that gene is dominant on this. I line. always call them plume tails, but so, I know what you mean. Yeah. So I I have her 
so that I can crossbreed and try to get the plume tail into some other platies. Then I like Tin Winnies a lot. They're one of my favorites. Yeah. They they don't show well on video, like in, or in pictures. Like the true colors aren't going to come through on this video, I bet. But in person, that bright gold and green yeah, it's on the side, isn't it? yeah, they're a really cool fish. And if I understand, they're the smallest species of the true Danios or yeah. something like that. These cute little guys, and they're not a pain in the butt like zebra Danios can nope. be. They're not as they're even though they're, they're, not saying, they're saying genetically they're the same fish, but there's they no don't way act, they don't act the same. There's they don't no have the way. same coloration. I don't have the same temperament. They don't, yeah, there's no way. I, it makes no it sense. It just to needs me. more study. Yeah, it's smaller and completely different behaviorally. So and then there's assassin snails in here that are spawning like mad. That I usually list on my site. Yeah. And there's also about 25 standard bushy nose plecos in here growing right. out of different sizes. Bushies being bushies. Oh, the seal. There's no, no breeders. In okay, here. mile high plecos. There you go. There's a pleco tail. That should make you happy. They're, they're just grow. They're just grow outs in here. That's all pleco people are used to back, seeing anyway. Oh, there we plant. go. There we go. Pleco people are always like, look, you can see the tail. Isn't that beautiful? I'm like, yep, it's a cool tail. <laughs> Just kidding, all you Pleco people. All right, another, is this catch them all for now? Um, this holds my cherries. All my cherries are in here, except for the breeders that I've separated. Oh, right. So I hold all my colony cherries in here, long and short fin. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got some platies in here. Cherries are just a fish season. that, they, they make you happy. They're peaceful, they're super colorful. They're, they're just fun when little I, fish. When I redo the room, I'm gonna I got I'm buying the stuff, and I've got a guy who sent me I have the pictures of um, the Sri Lanka stream. Oh yeah! And I'm gonna do a 20 long true biotope for cherries. Cool. So you have a picture of the habitat? Yeah, I have a do it? several pictures of the habitat. This is my plant factory tank. Yeah. So, so I, I, I know is, nothing about plants. All I do is multiply plants in here, and then I transplant them for sale. I, a lot of them I pot up and mm -hmm. I mark with a tag, so when they're on my site, you're buying that mm -hmm. plant. And is it like? But, like, oh, so you can actually see the actual plant you're getting. Yeah, we'll go in the other room. I'll oh, show that's you. cool. That's great. But that's great. Like these Vesuvius here, mm -hmm. that's a whole field of them that just reproduce. And then I go in and pull them, and you'll see where I transplant them into another tank to grow them out for sale. But mm -hmm. this is a whole just a field just of them growing mm -hmm. and reproducing with the runners. No charge for duckweed. I try to clean it pretty good <laughs> nice before I ship. That's why I transplant <laughs> to another tank. Oh, got it. Got it. Cool. Oh yeah, so it can float to the top right. and scoop it off. Um, I try to go duckweed free and I try to go uh, snail free, but no such it's thing. Live plants. No so such thing. Really, you're not gonna. Yeah, do all it. you plant, all you people out there that I see complaining on like Facebook and stuff that I bought plants and now there's snails. And I, like, what do you expect? Like, if you're not buying tissue culture, get over it. Enjoy the extras or don't get plants. I don't know what to tell you. Tissue culture maybe. But besides that, you're going to get stuff with them. It's, it's just nature. Grant over. All right, so what uh, What are these uh, endlers? Uh, tiger endlers. Okay, cool. Tiger endlers. Just, they're pretty. Yeah. They're pretty. They're in there just to pick at algae and... All Let's right. Let's put this hexazona, wild cuts. All right. It might not come out if I don't throw food in there. They're over here in the corner. Okay, I'm gonna. Here it comes. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me throw some food in there. All right, and and even that might not do it. Sometimes yeah. once the camera's out, fish are just like, "What is that?" They're they're pretty shy. Weird dude, weird camera. The oh, quarries, those are gorgeous. The quarries that are in there are quarries I brought back when I went to Peru. Uh, do you know the species on those? Um, no, they're a subspecies of. Uh, Pool under bridge. No, they're subspecies <laughs> of um like the standard elegans, but they're kind of unclassified. Oh, they cool. Have different coloration. Cool. This is really pretty. You said it's Exodona? Hexazona. Oh, Hex. Yeah, Desmopuntus. I don't, uh, it's going to be hard to get. Yeah, they're pretty I don't know shy. if you can see this on camera, but these guys have a really nice red color on them. These are neat. They're another one that has the same kind of markings as tiger barbs. But yeah, but they're obviously different. They're obviously different and they're they this kinda is a very got black that, water species. Kind of got that halo effect yep. around the they dark really, really stripe. like black water and diffused light. Is is there a common name on these I can no, look out there is for? Not. I bet I bet they'd it's so yeah, again, trying to order off commercial lists is hard. Yeah. Because it's all common names and you you never know what they actually are. And if it's not a fish that that I know a ton about, 
I can't identify it and so I call it whatever it came in as and then it's wrong and it's just hard. Pretty decent with the barbs now. I've been doing them for a couple of years. Yeah, it I'm seems like it. With them. You seem like like one of those guys that uh, if you get into something, you get into it all the way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Yeah, I'm kind <laughs> of an all-in guy. Yeah. I don't know how to be like, that's interesting, I'll do one. Those are excellent. I like those a lot. That's this. I like that. Uh, what's the what's the Indian one with the white on the pelvic fins? Cavalli. I like the Cavalli, and I like these. Those are so far my. Uh, these are awesome. Oh man, I hope they this is coming through on video. But they they're like a tiger bar with a thin stripe, but around the stripe there's like this glowing halo effect, like the after image of a picture or something. Have a lot of red in them. Yeah, and the fins are nice and red. That's a cool fish. Anything in here right now? Or is that this is my, I breed barbs in a basket quite often. Yeah, yeah, so the eggs so just fall through basket. the bottom. A floating basket. Uh -huh. I, I like this, this is packing, uh, yep. a ballooned packing bag. Yep. And I just um, load it in there over top of the shallow You moss. just make this out of like a crochet canvas? Yep. Yep, but it's just crochet canvas. And you so join it with, with hot glue? Or? Oh, fish line. Oh, with fish line, you sew it together? Cool. Uh, I have my daughter sew it together. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, throw them in there, and they'll spawn? Throw them in spawn. there, and then eggs drop down into the java, java moss. Java moss to tempt them to spawn? Yep, and then when they drop, eggs drop down into the java moss, the fry feet off the java yeah, moss. Yeah, yeah, so there's tons of critters in here. And you do the plankton food again yep. at this point? And... Bloody Marys. Bloody Should Mary, oh, Bloody oh there are, there. there are, there we go. And then that is Cryptochorine Neri. Scorn Neri. Oh, yeah, like that's that. cool. That's cool. That's Neri Crypt. You won't hardly find that. There you go, Bentley Pasco and you other plant nerds. Yeah, I'm a fan of Bentley. I like Bentley a lot. He's awesome. He's got it together with He's plants. a true plant nerd. Yep. I, I got it together. I haven't geeked out on plants enough to be a true plant nerd. I, I'm like, if it's simple and hardy and I can't kill it, maybe I'll put it in my tank. So that's just a Bloody Mary breeding tank. Yeah, those are cool. I bet they do great in here with all this plant material and stuff. That's, that's what shrimp like. Cool. Well, thanks, Mike. This is awesome. Well, should we look at your salt stuff? No. Okay. Let's go look at a couple other bars. Oh, things. there's more? Oh, I missed these. Let's look at these over here. Oh, over this, this way. This is my... I'm so lost. This is Pathia Gallus. Where did we start? We started over there. This is Pathia Gallus. All right. More yeah, plant there's, nerds. There's Bloody Mary shrimp in there. Oh, yeah, this plant is fantastic. This is uh, <laughs> Bacopa australis. Yeah. So I use it almost like a carpeting plant. Cool. And then... We really need to get some food. This uh, this barb, would we know it in the trade or it's... Uh, gold clown barb. Gold clown. Dwarf. Dwarf gold clown. Cold clown. It's, it's, those are full size adults in there. No way! That's like an inch. It's a true nano fish. That's cool. I like that. I like small fish. I mean, that's my thing. It's a true nano fish. Sometimes with me and the camera, even food doesn't do it. It's just too much strain. They usually, but come I can out. I can see them back there. They usually come out pretty good. It's 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 me. <laughs> Stranger danger. <laughs> no, we can see him there. Oh yeah, man. So those are adults. Those are breeding size. If I could find a comes coming up. Big group of those. The males are about half the size of the females. And they don't look. I mean, if there's cherry shrimp in here, that's not there's a vicious bloody, fish. There's bloody Marys in there. Oh, sorry. Yep. Oops. Oops. But, but they don't pick on the bloody Marys. <laughs> yeah, that's, they don't pick on the, the spawn of the bloody that's Marys. That's the point I was trying to make. If they aren't messing with. With and those are UGs growing out in the glass containers. All right, planters. Those are UGs. UGs crypts. There you go. Uh, in Bacopa, you said? Yeah. Bacopa australis. Oh, there's a bunch of babies in here. Oh, Moscow's? Uh, oh, Moscow's. Yeah. Purple Moscow's. We'll see it through the healthy gr patina of algae, which is great for babies. So this has cruciatus in it, a dwarf multi striped pygmy lunch. All right. They are, a true, they, they are a true egg scattering loach. They spawn like barbs do. So is that kind of like the... Uh, They're full size adults that oh, are in there. awesome! The is females that... are plump and the males are the thin ones. I hope this is showing up on camera. These have serious stripage. Wow! They should come to the front. Those are awesome. I mean I've seen uh, 
you know, dwarf lo rosy loaches and stuff. Yeah, and the rosy body, loaches in here. The body shape is similar, but the color uh, on rosy these... Loaches are a lot thinner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're a lot more torpedo than these yeah. are. Yeah. But uh, now they're going nuts. Man, they have serious tiger stripes on them. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, that big lateral stripe, too. I've never seen this fish before. Yeah. This is why I love going to people's fish that's, rooms That's Cruciata, Cruciatus. Uh, Vietnamese multi-stripe pygmy loach. And they, uh, they're an egg scatterer. They're an egg scattering so loach. So they breed like a barb. They breed like a barb, which is why I got them. And any luck so far? Um... They have spawned in here because I've seen the females thin down, but I haven't separated any. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. So, I mean, for these ones, would you just move them to another tank and see what hatches, or would you put them in a? I think separate... I'm gonna try them in a basket. Oh, okay. My breeding basket tank uh -huh. we just saw. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm excited about these, Mike. If you, oh. nice looking fish, isn't it? I want these. Yeah. I have rosy loaches and I like them, but these are... Yeah, I have rosy loaches. Those are easy to spawn. I haven't Those... tried them yet. How do you do it? You leave them alone and just let fry up here. Oh, really? They don't predate on them or anything? Hardly at all. Yeah. You don't get a lot of yield that way, but... Yeah, but it's... got a perpetual colony. But you colony get bragging this... rights. I got a perpetual <laughs> colony in this tank. Cool. We'll flip over there in a second. Yeah, they don't really come this out. Track. They hardly ever come out in this tank, but when they do come out, they... Well, I'm nerding out on this one a long time because I've never seen that, and I really like it. That is that is a cool pattern. Um, this has the Norman eye in it. They're in the back. They, they will not Oh, yeah. Back. So what we're going to see eyes. is, like, glowing lights. Yeah, I can, the lights are showing up. I can see them through the screen. Yeah, they're bright lights. That. They're, I'm hoping <laughs> they'll spawn in that Ambuli before I move them outside. Uh-huh. Because if they spawn in that Ambuli and then I move them outside, then I shouldn't have anything in here to predate them to fry. Then we're good. <laughs> right. Um... The tank is in process of redo. All right, cool. So you can't have enough of these though in a fish room. Empty tanks are gold. You, it's when you there's some blues in here, but oh, some neocaridinas. Yeah. Um, uh, about an inch and a half. Oh yeah. The reds. There we go. Growing out. There we go. Back there. Um, Orange shrimp. Orange shrimp in a heavily planted tank. Yep. The only thing in there is orange shrimp. Oh, cool. There's a cool live bear. Uh, Zephyrus zifidum real purification. Uh -huh. cool. And then that's a female um, of the, I put it in a drop fry mm -hmm. cool. of the um, Lamia species. And what kind of barb is this? That is a jumper of a, <laughs> of, of a Tico barb, the, the spawn that I jumper barb. I was growing the spawn out in the tank next to it and then jumped in I got to get them out of there. Which uh, species of Limia is this, this gravid female? Negra fasciata. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Cool. That's hey, girl. out of Jamaica. Okay, and then some guppies. Yeah, just some guppies grow. And the thing, uh, no, it's empty. Empty, empty planted. I, again, though, in a fish room, empty tanks are gold because you can move stuff to Standard them and raise you know, fry growing them. out and then Pearl. Rosy. Pearl Daniels? Rosie Daniels? Rosie Daniels should be. Oh, okay. Cool. Rosie Daniels. Those are cool. I like the subtle kind of shimmer on them. A lot of iridescence. Some live bears growing out. All right, let's flip over here. So we were talking about There's these. Rosie loaches in there. There's a big female Rosie right there. Oh, she is big. Yeah, she's a big female. I mean, that's as big as they're going to get. Yeah. But there's, I mean, there's fry in there, and there's red males in there. They just, they're really shy. Are they uh, egg scatterer, or do you know, do we know? I don't know do how they spawn, because they just, I mean, there's so many plants You never had here. to work it, it just they I never appear. had to work it. Yeah. And I got my lemias in here holding, and then mm -hmm. this is also my colony tank for my yellow white clouds. What's this guy? That is cool. That's a male lemia. That is a cool fish. It's like a tuxedo. <laughs> He's wearing a tux. Yeah, that's the male. Actually, when I was in Jamaica, I caught a, I caught a lot of these in the Martha Bray River and I photographed them. I couldn't collect them, but mm -hmm. they were in the Martha Bray. Oh, they're beautiful. fun. They're, they're nice, happy living, as you can tell by their activity and their iridescence and all that. That's I awesome. got a panda in there. Yeah, they, I saw that. Well, they, I had them in here. This was my tank for them, and they spawned, and I moved them out of here, and I got all the spawn in that, and then, I never caught that one. Yeah, that, so, that happens sometimes. There, there, there she is. <laughs> this is a really Oh, cool that's fish. cool. The, this is an Oranthixis. Yeah, this, this is, is the hyphen. Yeah. This is Costiatus. Yeah, this is out of India, right? 
Yep. 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 These are frequently available um, on my well, list, but I never, with. but I never actually see them in the hobby. Nope. Yeah. Nobody ever works with them. Nobody ever buys them. Nobody ever deals with them. That's kind of a cool dorsal fin. Yeah, it's a very nice looking fish. Very it, peaceful. It, it's almost like a checkerboard, but with yep. a cool dorsal fin. Yeah, the coloration is a lot like a checkerboard. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a Guffy Project. Uh, oh, and this. Super Reds. There you go. There you go, Mile High. Mikey Trevor, this is for you. I think he's fanning. I think he is. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that face. Oh, face. Hey, look at that one. She should be on. He should be on eggs. She or, should be on eggs. We've changed he, things he up be, around he here. He should be on eggs with uh, <laughs> we, or there's fry we inside We do it different there. here. There might be fry in there fish. even. Yeah. Cool. I'm like, all right. There's probably fry in there. Actually, those are long fins. Standard coloration, but they're long fins. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, there's there's juveniles in there. Check them out, little babies. They're about to come out. Yeah, they're gonna come out tonight probably or tomorrow. Right on. I'm gonna shake them out. <laughs> Mascara barbs, they're awesome. So, it's two so, males, two fem or three females in there. And this is the breeding setup, so the eggs yep. would fall through the egg yeah, crate. Yeah, drive them into the yarn mop, mm -hmm. and then the eggs fall through. Cool, and so far no, no joy, still working no joy, on them? No joy, still working on them. Okay, any idea what might trigger them? I'm gonna pull the males. And drop them in the 30 breeder for a week uh -huh. and go to blood worms and my try to fatten them up put them see I'm if this separate them for a little bit distance might make the heart grow fonder yep i'll pull the two males out of there <laughs> and how do you tell the males the males have the serrated on the dorsal fin mm -hmm. and they also have more coloration but when the dorsal fin goes up see how the her dorsal fin's down but it's, it's just on the oh, back side I, is I already see it. I already you see, see that male. black. Yep. When he puts that up, it's all serrated. Uh huh. And cool. that's true of almost all the Dawkins eyes. Um, like this type of Dawkins eye, there's mm -hmm. the exclamation, there's the imperial, there's the mascara, there's there's four of them. The they filament. Look very, very similar. They're all a little bit different mm -hmm. markings, but that dorsal fin separation is the same on all of them. Same thing with the Aurelius and the Tambraparni. They have that serrated dorsal fin. Uh -huh. So if it's smooth, it's a female. Yep. If it's serrated, it's a male. On the back side. Cool. And I can I can already tell. Even when it's down, I can see it yeah, kind of sticking out of it. Yeah, you can see what you're looking for. It's yeah. very, very clear. Cool. How big do these get full grown? Um, they'll get about another three quarters of an inch long. They're almost there. I've been, I had these things for two years, growing yeah. them out, getting them ready to spawn. They're just now spawning size. Why do you think, I mean, why is the price still so high? Is just no one producing them? Because no like filament barbs, them. the Almost, price isn't that bad. Nope. The mascara barb is the most demand, in demand one of the Dawkins eye. Mm -hmm. So it gets the highest price because number one, it's the one everybody wants. Do you think it's because it's harder to breed or just because it hasn't been I ramped think up the markings yet. make it. I think it's just the mark the market from the markings. I think everybody liked it. Once they see them all together, yeah, they're they pretty. Like the mascaras yeah, the most. they're really pretty. So I think it's just driven by the marketplace so more than anything higher else. Higher demand and there yeah. just aren't that many available. Yeah. Makes sense. Those are pretty. India is just starting to open back up. See, India for ten years, almost every fish exported out of India was the torpedo bar. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only fish they could make money on. So everybody was doing that bar and but now yeah, they're that became ninety percent so. of their exports. Yeah, now it's almost all captive bred for that. Right. One, so. so, well, because they put a fishing season on it and everything. Oh. They really restricted it. Yeah. But it really cut down. They were they quit exporting almost all the other barbs. Mm -hmm. So now it's just starting to ramp back up. And what's in the tank? Let's go to the next one over. Those are this cool one? looking. Yeah, little striped guys. Oh, that's Parapetrozona. <laughs> that is cool. a true species of tiger barb mm -hmm. not the tank bread now how muddy are the domestic tiger strains I think that they are not a true fish I think they're like the bushy nose pleco mm -hmm. I don't believe they're a true fish this is Puntigris Paris Petrozona okay and where does this originate is this Paris Petrozona it, it is all over Asia oh, okay. it's a, it's a Paris Petrozona is a pretty common one okay so you look in here I for a I have a female guppy in here. Mm -hmm. This is my example. She's been in here for two months. And she's not picked to death. She has no shredded fins, nothing, right? Uh-huh. And she's in a tank with lipstick barbs. Uh-huh. 
Parapetrozonas and Aurelius? Huntiger's Tigo. Oh, Tico that's what that guy is. Tico has the two spots. Uh -huh. They're juveniles. I, those were bred by me. I don't have the adults anymore. And then the lipstick only have the marking by the tail. What's this dark one here? This random. That random this that black one. ruby male. Black ruby. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Um, I moved all of my, I spawned the black rubies and moved all the parents and moved out all the juveniles and he was a straggler in the tank, so yeah. I just left him yeah. in there to grow I up. I do that too every now and then. I'm like, oh, he was missed just one. A, yeah, <laughs> missed one. Those lipsticks are cool. So the lipsticks, they only got the marking by the tail. Mm -hmm. Now lipstick males are supposed to shred them each other, and they're supposed. To, this is supposed to be a really aggressive, aggressive one? difficult mm -hmm. bar. But so I put them in there with the juvenile ticos because the markings are so similar, mm -hmm. and it just spread the aggression out. I have zero aggression in this tank. Oh, cool. So I have males not picking on each other. Females, they're not shredded. The Puntigris perispetrosona. That's a docile fish anyway. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned. Do you think the key is just there's enough of them in there? Nope. Like large I think the group? key is I think the key is that the tiger barb is such a hybrid, it's just high strong and it gives barbs a bad oh, name. Oh okay, gotcha. Gotcha. I think the true barbs, the majority of good our barbs are very good. They're look, it's a fully planted tank. You don't see any yeah. shredded plants. You don't see any shredded fins. Yeah. They're they're kept in the proper school. Yeah. So you're in the proper amounts. In the proper environment, and, they and like, they're very docile. Yeah. Are you, but you're thinking if this was domestic tiger barbs, we'd have a problem. We'd have a huge problem. Yeah. Gotcha. I think that fish is just a butthole and shouldn't even be in the trade. Now these are are these 33, Those are 33. gallon yeah. longs? Oh. Gallons. They're 48 by 12. Man, by 12. I wish they had. I wish they were more common. I have one. I have six. And I love them. I have six. They're awesome. Okay, okay, rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> I love that tank. They're they're such a great tank. That's just a catch all. All right, random fish goes in this tank. How about yep. these cherries? Oh no, 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 those are endlers. No, no, those no? are. You ever hear a Tanaka? He's a guppy breeder. And I have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, those are. He did like maple, maple leaf. leaves. Those, that, these those are, are maple, maple leaves. Leaf guppies. Oh, okay, cool. And I call them endlers. Oh, smack me now. Those, those are Tanaka's maple leaves. Pure. That's where I know him from, actually. I know Tanaka Maple Leafs. That's the name I know. But I've never seen him in person, so yep. this well, is kind of cool. Tanaka Maple Leafs. The males are gorgeous. Yeah, they are. They're really pretty. I like the swords. Yep. Kind of that double sword. Liar tail, I guess. Lear or liar? I never knew. I don't know, I don't know what the Greek instrument is. Um, and some plants that down here. That is about 50 long, fin, bushy nose plecos. Oh, I see them. Long. There they are, growing There's up. About 50 of them in there. Yep. And then I'm just then hold, um, holding some the little platies for the pond, and then there's about 25 standard bushy nose plecos in there, about an inch long, growing out. So we're in Michigan. What is pond season? When can you actually finally Memorial do Day that? weekend? Okay. And well, the stuff I put out, I can put out Memorial and Day. And you bring them back what October? Labor Day weekend. Oh, okay. I go by the, the holidays because it gives me a three day. day. It gives me a three day weekend to that, put them in and take them out. That's awesome. That's awesome. That makes sense. So I got to move some tanks around because that thirty breeders got to go on the bottom shelf of that rack. Uh huh. The top tanks I can put into storage. The seventy fives, the three seventy fives are sold. The forty breeder I'm going to sell. And then I'm tearing this whole wall apart, and I have forty eight by thirty by twelve inch. All glass tanks with overflows. Oh, nice. I bought them for corals. Uh huh. But they're going to be for barbs now, right? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug them into a floor drain, bottom ones, and then I'm, I've got these 48 by 18 by 12 coral tanks. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to plumb those to drop into the bottom tank, and the bottom tank to drop into the floor drain. Yeah, yeah with an automatic water change on top. Like Bodrock does with his quarries. And those yeah. are all going to be grow-out tanks. Cool. So this whole bank, of, this cool. whole wall will be nothing but grow-outs without automatic That's awesome, water changes. Because this is the problem most fishers rooms run into. It's we see so much cool stuff that we get full of adults and then it's like, oh right. wait, where do I put the babies? So this whole wall will be nothing but grow-out tanks. And then I'm going to put enough lighting on it that I can put the potted plants and the plants on driftwood cool. and rocks for sale. Cool. In the grow-up tanks. All right, we missed some. This last little bit here. Well, this is a 
basically every, all the plants in here are for sale. All right, cool. This so one of my first sale types. Oh yeah, so you separate them out, you right. put them here, you show this Throw is what you'll get, more. and there you are. Yep. And then my breeding stock is always protected. Yeah. Cool. It's not breeding, but I know your propagation stock. What would you call protected. that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm and sure the marijuana farmers will There's a 30 know. breeder in there. I'll show you. I got potted up plants where I pot them up and I label them. Oh, look at this. Yeah. See, so I put a label yeah. in there, C. Mm -hmm. So when you see that on your website, so that you is order what you're buying. Item C from uh, you are Extreme Aquatics on getgills.com, this is the plant you'll get. Right. That's that's awesome. And I, I usually put two pictures, one of it labeled like that, and another one with a ruler in there so you can actually... Yeah see the size. I've seen that with some bettas and discus and stuff, but I don't know if anyone else is doing that with plants. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's pretty cool. So then you know what you're buying. CPDs! Yep. Alright, Jimmy, this is for you. That's my breeding colony. Those are an awesome fish. And you know what? Yours are out and about and not shy. Usually when I see tank full CPDs, I'm like, what's in there? They're like, CPDs. And I'm like, where? Because <laughs> they're hiding behind the filter. Yeah, plenty of other shy fish. <laughs> yeah, but these ones are... That's awesome. Do you think it's because the tin winnies are in there? Bithering them? Yeah. So if you've got shy CPDs, it might be worth throwing a couple tin winnie in there. Uh, maybe that'll draw them out. Because usually, honestly, they're just hiding like crazy. Cool. I think, and then these are, at this time... There's shrimp colonies in most Shrimp of colonies. Those. Cool. There's just keeping them at red reallys in here. There's blacks in here. There should uh -huh. be yellows or oranges in this one. Cool. Hey, Mike, thanks for showing us, man. That's awesome. What? All right, so there you have it the Barb Whisperer, Mike Manji. Uh, <laughs> I. I saw stuff there that I thought was just absolutely incredible. So Mike, thanks again for uh, allowing me to come over and sharing your knowledge uh, with all of us here and allowing us to take a video so that everyone can see this and enjoy it and for opening my eyes to a lot of different species and stuff that I, I never knew about. It's funny, you, you don't know what you don't know till you know that you don't know it and uh, it takes someone like you to make me know that I don't know it. So I had a great time. Anyway, if you like this stuff, if you would consider subscribing, liking, sharing, hitting notification bells, all that schmaz, it helps a lot and is appreciated. And until next time, I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye. Um,